Hello and good afternoon, good evening, morning, whatever time it is for you. Uh, welcome to your very first AP Environmental Science Lecture of the Year. Um, this particular lecture, Lecture 1A, is going to take us into just some basic vocabulary before we can delve into our first real lesson dealing with species interactions. All right. Um, reading that accompanies this. Now, uh, many of you may not have the hard copy of your textbook just yet. Uh, if you don't, not to worry. I did put a PDF file up on Google Classroom uh, with these page numbers on it for you. So you should have no problem getting to that reading, even if you've not yet been able to get to that hard copy of your textbook. Getting out of hand here. Uh, is listed right here for you. Um, now, I put a PDF copy of this slideshow also on the Google Classroom post, so there's no need to try to quickly write all these words down and then go through and define each one of them. The definitions are going to kind of come back, come around organically in this slideshow, and hopefully you can walk away with a relatively good understanding. All right, so when we talk about a system, right, a textbook definition of a system uh, is a group of interworking parts that interact and function as a whole. There are all kinds of system examples out there. So you could think of a computer as a system. You've got your monitor, your hard drive, your processor, speakers, microphone, etc. All of those interact to function and make your computer system. Right? You could think of body systems like your uh, uh, circulatory system, which is a function of your heart, uh, and veins and arteries and lungs, etc. All of those function together to make that circulatory system. And one of the things to think about in terms of systems is every part has a, an integral function. And if we were to disrupt a part of that system, what might happen to that system as a whole if even just one little part is messed with? All right. Now, and we're getting into uh, environmental science, right? One of the biggest parts of environmental science is ecology. Okay, so ecology is essentially the study of ecosystems. And ecosystems, right, are composed of biotic components and abiotic components. Biotic, as the name implies, is talking about the living parts of that ecosystem. So the plants, bacteria and fungus, the animals, um, et cetera. Right? The abiotic parts of an ecosystem, often overlooked, um, are referring to things like how much sunlight and living space is available, what's the soil composition, uh, how much precipitation do we get, what's the, the average temperatures and climate of that region. Right? So ecosystems are composed of and influenced by both biotic and abiotic factors. And so the field of ecology is essentially looking at the function of ecosystems. And within environmental science, we're looking at human interactions and how we impact those ecosystems, right? But ecosystems are systems. They're a set of interworking parts that interact and function as a whole. If we disrupt part of that ecosystem, what might happen to the system as a whole? All right, so when we're talking about ecology, Right, so biology is, is very organized all the way down to the molecular level. There's a whole field of chemistry called biochemistry, right? And so biology would look at everything from biomolecules to cells to tissues to body systems to the whole organism. The field of ecology is really looking at everything above uh, that of, in terms of organization, above that of organisms. So whenever we're talking about more than one organism, Right and interactions that might occur, we're in that world of ecology at that point. All right, so um, some other important terms for us. We have what's called the biosphere, and biosphere are the portions of the Earth that contain living organisms, right? So within the biosphere, we have the atmosphere, which I'm sure you guys are all familiar with. We call the hydrosphere, which is the, the areas with liquid water and the lithosphere, which is the portions of the Earth's crust that also supports living organisms. So our biosphere is actually portions of all three of those. Uh, so biotic components. Um, so again, this is just some vocabulary gathering for us, right? So 
in future lessons, we're going to refer to things like producers often. So producers, also known as autotrophs, so those are synonyms, by the way, producers and autotrophs. Those are referring to things like plants and algae, and those are things that don't have to eat other organisms in order to survive. They're actually able to create their own food, usually using sunlight. Then we have what are called primary consumers. Primary consumers are herbivores, which means they eat producers, and producers means plants and algae. Secondary consumers, right, are carnivores, which means that they eat other uh, primary consumers. Tertiary consumers would eat secondary consumers, and theoretically, we could go up to like quaternary consumers that eat tertiary consumers in some ecosystems. All right. Um, so as we move through the next set of lessons, right, we actually just covered a fair amount of vocabulary, right? And by the way, just as producers have a synonym autotrophs, our consumers of all types have a synonym what we call heterotrophs. All right. So um, we have herbivores and carnivores. Herbivores eat plants and algae. Carnivores eat other animals. Right? Then we also have what are called omnivores, which are organisms like humans. Right? So we don't fit into any one category in terms of primary consumer, secondary consumer, or tertiary consumer. We tend to eat at several different trophic levels, which means we, are, uh, we sometimes eat producers, plants and algae, fruits and vegetables, and grains. Sometimes uh, we eat meat. Now, some of you may be vegetarian, which would make you herbivore. All right, uh, that is it for this lesson. The next lesson, Lecture 1B, will go into much more depth in terms of interaction between species.